Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Eden and Town Council special meeting tonight, which will be followed by a regularly scheduled committee meeting. <clears throat> we'll follow our agenda for this evening, beginning with the special meeting. Uh, there'll be two items on that agenda, as you can see. We're going to talk about the grocery store recruitment effort and an update on that. And then we're going to, um, I'll declare a recess from the special meeting because the second part of that is a closed session which we will do at the end of the committee meeting session um, so as you won't have to go and come so with that being said uh, i'd like to first of all welcome two special guests here tonight we have uh, chairman of the county commissioners uh, jeff smith and uh, county manager kevin howard who are going to be with us uh, for the presentation of the grocery store update. <clears throat> uh, we invited these two gentlemen to come specifically to show our audience the concerted effort that's being made by all parties, both in the county and in the town, to bring some resolution to what we are faced here, um, we're faced with at the present time, and that's one grocery store. Um, Frank McGroy is also going to give you some information on what the Eden Choan Partnership has been doing since he last spoke with us. So with, with that bit of information here tonight, I'm hoping that you present and those who will watch this broadcast will, will not only be up to date, but feel more assured that we are all doing everything within our uh, capabilities to bring some competition to the grocery market in Edens and in Chilwin County. Again, with the caveat <clears throat> that we're working with private industry or private enterprise here. We have private landowner and private corporate grocers, so influences our uh, only matter of, or only manner rather, of, of being able to uh, help with the situation and hopefully bring in um, some new grocery operators. <clears throat> Just backing up for one second, uh, a little bit of fill in from the history we gave you at our last meeting. When Farmers Food closed, um, we had previously been visited by Walmart with respect to possibly putting a big box in Chowan County corporate decided not to do that, but when the farmer's spot opened up, um, our administrative team, led by Ann Marie, contacted um, those people who were here representing the big box because we knew that from that experience that they also had smaller operations that might fit in the space that had become available with uh, the shutdown of farmers' food. So we've been visited quite a bit um, from large to smaller uh, operators. We've also looked into uh, Sambo Dixon, Councilman Dixon, discovered that other states have ordinances that deal with um, purposefully uh, keeping a space dark to help um, limit competition and we learned that those ordinances do exist in other states. Amory is in uh, communication with our state through the um, Institute of Government to see what, if anything, exists in our statutes that would enable um, us to enact similar ordinances for the town of Edenton. Um, other items that have been expressed in the community that are being addressed, Anne Marie mentioned it in her comments to the newspaper, and a lot of you are concerned about stocking issues in the existing space. Uh, the store tends to run out of product from time to time, and that was addressed with the, um, directly with the representative from Food Line that we were able to speak with on the telephone or over the telephone here recently. Um, and, and finally, and Frank may touch on this as well, um, 
not wanting to wait around to see what happens. We're trying through the Eden and Chorn partnership to identify other parcels of real estate in the community that might be available uh, for a grocer um, going forward. So these are some things that are ongoing and I would like to ask Frank now if he would please come forward and share his information with you. everybody. It's a pleasure to be back again uh, to give you an update on what's happened since our last meeting. I wanted to bring this data chart back up because there were a couple of questions that surfaced the last time and I wanted to be clear with you after I did more research on this. These data elements here are from the most recent leakage report that's been done through Electricity. So we're looking at January 2015 data. What I want to do is give this a little more context to that 15 mile commuting radius that's so significant. In looking at all of the data elements in the report, just so you can have a frame of reference here, the total demand that's estimated in the county within that, and when I say the county, I mean that 15 mile radius which goes, touches into other counties as well. The total demand in the report is listed as 12 million 250,000 and some change. The supply presently is 6,463,830 dollars. So when you look at this leakage number of 5,700 plus pushing in on 5,800,000 that 31 percent leakage that gives you a sense of uh, what we're talking about in terms of the capacity of this market to adequately serve another grocery store. And I keep pounding away at this because the more I travel around the county surrounding us, you recognize how limited the resources are in that market territory. So this 15 mile commute radius is really conservative. We were talking this afternoon and I think when Lowe's store was doing its study, it, it factored in a 40 mile commuting radius given the rural nature of this area, the coastal plain. So I think that basically these are fairly conservative numbers depending on how aggressive the store is that would come in. So having said that, what I wanted to do is tell you since our last meeting we've had ongoing dialogue with the folks at Foodline. We've talked to the different uh, principals involved at the two plazas that are that have come up in our discussion. We've spent a lot of time talking to folks in the county and in the town, so this is very much a collaborative effort among the leadership in all of those arenas. And we come up with a, a very simple and direct action plan that obviously is easier to state than to carry out in detail, but I think this is a manageable plan for us to work with. The first element here is to work with town and county and elements in the private sector, individuals that own property, to determine uh, an appropriate alternative site for a second grocery store. Now let me tell you why we're looking at this alternative site. It's kind of a contingency plan on our part. We know that if Food Lion leaves its present location, that would create a void in that shopping plaza and our goal would be to fill that void with another grocery store. However, it's our understanding, we don't have privy to the detail, but it is our understanding that there is a lease agreement that stands there and Food Line could exercise its right to continue to control that space even after it leaves, if it decides to do it. And controlling that space would actually determine who else could come into that plaza area. That's the way that is structured. So our feeling is rather than wait for that decision to be made by the corporate uh, heads that, that deal with this issue, 
we need to be proactive, we need to get out front of this and determine whether or not there's an alternative site that can, that can adequately accommodate the needs of a new grocery store. So that's important to us. We'll work simultaneously in this effort with Gemini because as I said, it's important from everyone's perspective to keep that as a viable plaza as opposed to letting it become a ghost town. So that's important from our uh, perspective as well. And then the third element is the more complex element, but I think all the empirical data is out there for us to do it. We want to develop a market profile of this community that will speak directly uh, to the potential grocery store chains that are out there. We want to cultivate those prospects and hopefully out of that cultivation process secure other stores that are interested in this market. We already know there are other stores that are out there uh, because of what's happened in the bidding process uh, with Show and Crossing. We don't know specifically who those players are. And we're not free to divulge what we know at this particular time. But we do know that there was interest. We do know that the owner worked with a number of prospects and concluded uh, his relationship in this process with Food Line and they've got a signed lease agreement. So that's what we know. But we do know there are other players interested and we're going to look to cultivate those players as well as uh, any other grocery store that's willing to listen to our case. I think what we want to do is get the demographic data clear. I think we want to make the case of the leakage that occurs within the 15 mile commuting radius, but I think we can make a stronger case by going out further too and doing more legwork and collecting that data and showing layers of the market as we go out. I think the other thing that we talked about this afternoon that I could think that I think makes an important visual impact, and this is based on some input from a recent uh, workshop dealing with retail development. The idea of actually citing the market territory on a map and then labeling where all of the other grocery operators are, the brand, the location, so that anybody that we're trying to cultivate can quickly see where the competitive players are in the market and determine where the void is as it relates to our leakage data and beyond that. So we want to get some decent uh, marketing materials. I can think they could be simple and direct to tell our story without overstating it. I think it's important with these individuals to be very empirical in our approach and have data that can be substantiated. So we are going to begin that process immediately and hopefully begin to cultivate uh, likely prospects that want to enter this market. So that's where we stand right now. I would reinforce that it's a highly collaborative effort involving leadership from the town and the county and we're reaching out to the private sector as we work on this project. We think uh, this is an important, uh, it's an important outcome that we need to achieve. We certainly, and this, this comes up because given our role in economic development, we certainly do not want to see Food Line be unsuccessful in its effort. It's a business in this area, it employs people, we want them to be successful. We just want to make sure that the market stays competitive. We believe that this market can support another store and that means additional employment opportunities for our folks in this county and in this town. So that's what drives us in this effort. And I think, uh, I think we can be successful based on what we know at this particular point. I'm going to open the floor to any questions that might exist. My intention was to keep it brief and direct. It's a, this is an ongoing story that hopefully will have new elements to bring to you on an ongoing basis. Council members, anybody have anything for Frank? I don't have a question. I've got a comment. Okay. Thank you for looking for the alternative site. Um, because I, I think we all probably are going to agree, and I think they're going to probably show us in the end that exactly what you've talked about as far as uh, what we've talked about, keeping that store dark, is their intent. Um, and there's no doubt we all realize that just from... Facebook and people putting uh, different receipts from the same company out of Elizabeth City on the same items that they're already strangling us the best they can. Uh, I agree, they're a business here in town and they employ people, but they've, they've seen this opportunity to 
unfortunately take advantage of our citizens. So I'm, I'm tickled to death and I think hopefully once that does happen and, and uh, I know you said you couldn't call out a, a chain but I have a great friend of mine that uh, works for Piggly Wiggly. They wanted to come here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We had uh, talked to them. Yeah, well. we talked. I talked to him on several different occasions. Uh, they just couldn't even get their foot in the door with the guy that owns Farmers Food. But uh, I appreciate what y'all are doing. I, I wish you nothing but a lot of success in bringing another store here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe that's exactly what we need, an, another alternative site. Uh, and, and hopefully something will follow in behind it. Yeah, I think uh, that was an important part of our contingency plan, planning for the reasons you, you specified. It is possible for them to keep that storefront dark if they choose to. It's also possible for them to sublet that site. Uh, we picked that up in the conversation that we had with the folks from Food Line. Now, whether they choose to exercise any of those options, we don't have any control over and they were not free to discuss it, but uh, they, there is an alternative on their part, not only if they, let me state this correctly, they could keep it dark, but they could also sublet it right. to a non-grocery uh, store provider right. or grocery provider. So either way, it would block that site from uh, a competitor. So the, we agree with your thinking. That alternative site development is critical. Anyone else? Frank, I concur with Councilman Biggs in that uh, <clears throat> we really appreciate your efforts and Anne Marie's efforts in working with this and some work has been done from the county also. And we really appreciate that. We, we, this finding an alternative site is really an important issue. But I think it's also important that the general public know that you know it, it's a free enterprise system and the town council does not, nor the county commissioners, does not control that. It, it is a free enterprise system and, and if Terry Reeves does not want to rent that space to Piggly Wiggly or anyone else, he has the right to decide not to do that. Oh, and also the owners with uh, uh, the other shopping center out there, they, they can do the same thing. Exactly. They, they have the lease with Food Line and Food Line has obviously uh, made a commitment that they're going to keep that in order. So. Yeah, I, I just think it's important that the general public knows that. Yes, and I think also important for us to reinforce, we want Terry to be successful. Sure. You know, th these are private enterprises. He's got a plan for retail development at Show and Crossing. I think that's great for everybody. We'd like to have every storefront filled. So uh, we bless him in that effort going forward, but there's still unfinished work that needs to be done. And I think our role can be to facilitate, but you're right, when you're dealing with the private sector, they have considerable autonomy. But we've had a, a high degree of cooperation so far with many of the players that we've dealt with. So I feel positive about uh, our movement forward on this. Well, there's also more room in that same shopping center out there where COA was. You know, talking about an alternative site, a grocery store could come there as well. Uh, I think given the lease agreement, yeah, that would not be there possible. Are, that's restricted. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anything that's part of that property uh, can be restricted from a competitor. At least we got it on the table here. And, and Frank, <laughs> I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm uh, against Terry Reeves. I'm tickled to death that he's got a tenant going in there. No, I, I really am tickled to death. Yeah. I think I'm like everyone else. My anger is, is toward Food Line in trying to uh, handicap our citizens. And that's what we're doing. Well, that could be. I think the jury is still out in terms of what they'll actually do, and we've encouraged them to make a decision sooner rather than later so as to resolve the uh, frustration and anxiety that is in the area, but uh, clearly they are their own agents. We have no control over them. This is something we do have control over, and I think this can help us to get a decision more rapidly uh, from those involved, so. And there is a lot of anxiety and frustration. There is tremendous frustration. Mm -hmm. There is. And we're trying to respond to it in the ways that are available to us. 
Okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Good job. Um, can you leave the computer running, Frank, because we have uh, other presentations. Okay, uh, special meeting, second item is a closed session and I'll recess.